Gambi Citizen TV. All right, and it's now time for data points. You recall that there was something that happened towards the end of last week, that is on Friday and Saturday, with a power blackout. We want to spend some time to understand exactly what happens when Kenya Power is purchasing power from different uh, producers in the country. We begin by looking at uh, the National Control Center, which is the center that controls how much power goes to the grid. It is where uh, the dispatch orders are issued to various plants. We'll be looking at some of them. And to me, the power demand at that point is the target and of course this means that once the dispatch orders have been issued the power purchases mix has to vary depending on what is available how much power is required and of course the average weighted tariff has to change depending on the cost of every uh, source of power that has been deployed or dispatched Staying with the NCC, the dispatch priorities, this is what the National Control Center looks at. And the essence is to deliver the lowest cost tariff. These are some of the considerations, the plans that must run. These are plans that um, have uh, technical and legal issues. Legal to mean that even if you don't take that power, you still have to pay. So they have to prioritize that uh, that power should be taken. There are dams that must maintain a certain minimum flow rate. And therefore, if they are running and uh, the electricity is coming, then there has to be taken. There is the renewable plants which have the contracts of take and pay, meaning as long as the uh, power is coming, for instance, wind power is coming in, it has to be taken because, again, uh, that has to be paid for as long as it is available. Then the KPLC takes output or has to face uh, deemed charges, especially coming from independent power producers. We'll be breaking that down shortly. Uh, but looking at uh, the national demand, the highest on record based on a report uh, published by the Presidential Task Force on what happens with the power, that is in 2021, the maximum peak was at 7 p.m. We'll be looking at a graph, and that time the demand was 2,000 megawatts at the, that particular moment. But the lowest has been 850, that is on record, and it happens between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. We'll be looking at the graph again, and the, here it is. This is uh, taken from the month of June 2021. You'll see that uh, at the lowest was between midnight and about 5 a.m., then it starts to take a spike. This means that Kenyans are starting to um, rise up and get on with their businesses. Then there's a plateau in between here, 8 a.m. and uh, 6 p.m. There's sort of a plateau, meaning that the demand of the power is not changing as much. And then there's a spike at between 7 o'clock and about 7.30. That means that a majority of Kenyans are now back at home and getting to watch different things and consume power for lighting. Then it starts to go down and goes back to midnight where we found it first. Now, if you're talking about that, there is a variety of the sources of power. For instance, the hydropower can, can be stored, meaning that you can stop the flow from the dams and therefore that can be used to handle sharp increases in power. But also, there are large hydros that contribute to the stability of the grid, meaning that uh, when power is running and the supply is continuing in the country, the large hydros are the most reliable in maintaining uh, the grid stability. But hydros also have a spinning reserve. This means that at a time that you may have that uh, source of power is not as uh, reliable the hydros will be in a position to fix that gap. And then there's what you call the intermittent power sources. And you may have heard this word the past few uh, days or the past one week. Wind and solar are intermittent, obviously because there's no solar uh, uh, power during the night because it's not moving unless it's stored. And then of wind, it keeps changing depending on the force of the wind. Then the, the thermal or diesel plants have higher tariffs because, of course, of the cost of uh, investment and the cost of production. Production. Then the maximum power consumption recorded was at 1,994 megawatts according to the presidential task force, but the minimum power consumption again is 1,014 megawatts at any particular day, but there's a lowest recorded which was 854 that you have seen from that graph that we just looked at, but there's power that must run. That is, whether there is demand or not, there are certain power generators that must run and they produce up to 1,297 megawatts. This means if that consumption at that point is 854, then you have excess that is not being used. And that is what you call wasted power generation. And of course, the small hydros and geothermals and wind um, must run now because of the contracts. 
there is some power that comes from different um, sources. The hydropower in the country contributes up to 825 megawatts. Geothermal contributes 787 megawatts. You realize that both are uh, renewable sources of energy. Thermal or diesel, which is non-renewable, contributes 756 megawatts. That is the installed capacity. Wind, which is also a renewable source, contributes up to 436 megawatts. Solar, again renewable source, contributes up to 50 megawatts, meaning that the total capacity, total installed capacity is 2,854 megawatts. But what does this mean when it comes to, if you're looking at the independent power producers that have been quite a center of conversations? The total capacity, again, as we said, 1,203. The electrical kind of wind power, this has been blamed over the past few days that it might have caused uh, the tripping that we witnessed in the country. It contributes up to 300 megawatts could be 310 according to the figures quoted by the cabinet secretary. Kipeto Energy, which is also an IPP, contributes wind up to 100 megawatts of installed capacity. Or Power 4, which uses geothermal to produce power, has a capacity of 150 megawatts. And Rabai Power Limited, which contributes thermal power, meaning using fuel or diesel, contributes 88.6 megawatts of installed capacity. Now, these are Kenjan plants uh, that are owned by Kenjan, run by Kenjan. They sell power to Kenya Power. Geothermal plants contribute a total of 758 megawatts. Hydros and Gong, Gong One contribute 823 megawatts. And then the thermal, this is Kipevo and Muhoroni, 236 megawatts. You may have heard the president saying that they, they are plans to retire the Muhoroni thermal plant. Wind, which is Gong Two, contributes 20.4 megawatts. Again, this is intermittent because it depends on the availability of the wind and therefore Kenjan has a total capacity based on the Kenya power report of 2022 of 1837 megawatts so that power is still not sufficient to finance or, or to uh, satisfy the demand of the country which is close to 2000 uh, but these are power purchases according to the figures that we have that in the year 2020-2021 Kenjan supplied 8443 gigawatt hours the whole of that year. They got paid 44.8 billion shillings. Now this is where it gets interesting because the independent power producers supplied only 3,658 gigawatts. Compare that. It's more than uh, half of what Kenjin supplied, but they were paid 56.3 billion shillings. There's an explanation to that and you'll be looking at it shortly. But in the subsequent year, that is 2021-2022, you realize that uh, Kenjin supplied 7,911 gigawatt hours, slightly lower than the previous year, at a cost of 48.4 billion shillings. The independent power producers supplied slightly higher, 4,742 gigawatt hours, at a cost of 74.9 billion shillings. So does this mean in terms of percentages? You realize that there's a Noditor General Report of 2021 that found that Kenjin supplied 62% of power to the Kenya Power. But in terms of payments, they received 47% of what was paid by Kenya Power for uh, power production or the cost of power. For independent power producers, they supplied to the grid 38% of the power, but they were paid 53% of the resources, meaning that uh, their power is more expensive than what is coming from the Kenjan. Now, in terms of the power KPLC revenues that they have been able to collect in the year ended June 2022, domestic, contributed 46.1 billion shillings, which is 29% of their total revenues. Small commercial was 29.7 billion shillings, which is 19%. The bulk of the power went to commercial and industrial, which was 80.2 billion shillings, or 51% of the revenue. Now, street lighting contributed just about 1%, and mainly in urban areas like Nairobi. Now, something more to note is that in terms of the KPLC sales, the domestic, um, the quantity that was sold, sold to the domestic market was 2,728 uh, gigawatt hours. Small commercial, 1,471 gigawatt hours. Commercial and industrial, 4,851. And therefore, when you look at this, you can obviously start to understand why the difference in, in terms of the revenues contributed. But before we exit from this conversation, um, so this, 
are the categories, street lighting, and of course, uh, the amount of uh, quantity that has been uh, needed uh, by the Kenya Power. So of importance to note here is that despite the differences in the independent power producers, and the Kenjin produced uh, power that is produced by Kenjin, there are all those differences in terms of what is the cost of investment, what is the return of investment that the, the independent power producers require, and of course there are those contracts that have been signed between the government and the power producers, or the Kenya power and the power producers that la last more than 20 years, meaning that uh, the country has to continue paying for that for some time unless those contracts have been renegotiated. And that is data point this week. We take a short break here on tonight. When we come back, we have more 